Let's look at joining two existing curves using a new uh, third Bezier curve to join them re relatively smoothly, uh, continuously and differentially at any rate. Um, so here's two people, or, um, two people in a group designing a roller coaster. Bob has got a piece of, of the roller coaster that's ba basically part of a helix with a cosine sine uh, in the x, y, and then progressive linear motion in, in z. And that's going to go one, around one loop of the helix. Kind of boring, but I want it to be somewhat simple here. Then Alice has got something that's going linearly in x and y, <coughs> so sort of a straight line track if you look down on it, but going up and down in a sine curve uh, in the z direction. So that's just kind of rolling, rolling hills. Okay, So we'd like to join these pieces, or we, we're, we can feel free to modify them um, as long as we don't change the spirit of either of the ones. Um, to get them to join better and to put a Bezier in between. Now, um, I've got this new applet that I've been looking at and uh, want to use to show you this. It's a very powerful applet, and uh, I think we're going to try and switch over to the, using this one. Uh, you can see this is a, right now it's default to graph a function of two variables, which is actually what we're doing in the next chapter. But I can just uh, click that off, and, um, <clears throat> oh, I, that actually doesn't do it. Um, Graph, clear all graphs, there we go. Okay, so I cleared all graphs, and now I'm going to go to graph again, and I'm going to add a space curve. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it over here, because I don't need these other functions anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to put in, let's see, I've got cosine t already, convenient, two times sine t, you put in the times, I'm not sure if you need it, actually it doesn't look like you do, but it might be safe to do that. And then t over 2 plus 1 and put in the correct values of t, 0 to 2 pi, and I can put that in as 2 times pi. Um, the orientation arrows we don't need, uh, the trace and animation we'll maybe show you in a second. Okay, so that's okay pretty much except it's going off the, off the frame. Okay, so we're going to go to view settings, other settings, um, and where was it? Um, Format axes, there we go. Sorry, just forgot where it was. Okay, so we need a little bit better. Um, the x min, y min, those might be okay. Let's do minus 3 to 3 maybe. I don't know if we need that so much. We definitely need more in the in the z. Minus 2 in the z looks good, but maybe about uh, 6 in the z max. Let's try that. Okay, that looks a bit better. Okay, so let's close out of that. All right, so there's our first curve. Okay, now the nice thing here is that uh, the other applets don't really do multiple curves, as far as I know. I've never seen an option for that. But this, you can add another space curve. Aha, okay, let's leave that over here. Okay, so that's going to be 3 times t, t minus 2, and 2 times sine of 3t. These are just the... Oh, actually, let me check. Let me see if this works. Maybe we don't need the times. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it. Okay, and then that's gonna be from zero. It's a pretty recently made applet, so it probably works. To pi. I don't worry about this right now. Oh, it looks good. Okay, so it doesn't look like I need. I didn't even need the three, the times there either. Okay. Alrighty. So let me just show you the 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 trace thing. The animation is nice. This will be nice when you actually um, look at your roller coaster. It's animating it. And it's animating it, I think, you know, at the correct speed for the parameterization that you have. So if you end up with a weird parameterization um, that you can't easily predict what the speed's going to be, that might be nice. Okay, um, it was a little slow, but that's okay. Alrighty, so let's kill the trace. We don't need that. Okay, now the problem is these don't they seem to match up very well at all. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, all right, it's got a very sensitive. If you click and drag, it's got a very sensitive rotation. So just move it just a tiny bit. Okay, and I think if you default it. Uh, you can default it to, yeah, let's see, um, well, that's standard projection, let's see, well, that's fine. Okay, as you can see, see, I'm not yet an expert with this very rather complicated plotter. Okay, so we'd like to, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take, I'm going to leave the helix in place, and I want to take the rolling hills and I'll lift it up and get it up there, okay? So here's the rolling hills. The y value is way off. Um, and the x value isn't so great either. The z, let's raise up by just adding 4 to that. Okay, that's a little better for the height. Okay. And then 
let's um, I tell you what let's switch these guys um, let's take this let's actually make this T and put the three on here but then make it a plus two instead of so one of the, there's still a three to one ratio but just I switched one was the three to one and then I switched which ones was shifted okay that's a bit better okay so now they're sort of vaguely in the right places to connect now you don't want to make them too close if you make them really really close then they're basically making a sharp corner and even if you put a bezier in between you can guess hopefully you can guess what do you think is going to happen you're going to get really sharp curvature really really tight curvature and that's not going to be good now you want some curvature it's supposed to be an exciting roller coaster but don't make it uh, ridiculous okay so this might be kind of good to put them vaguely next to each other okay so now um, I've got my two curves and let's go back to by hand here don't ask me why that's pink it just does some weird color registration sometimes okay so what we need to know okay so now we've switched this that was T and then that's 3t plus 2 and then that's 2 sine 3t plus 4 okay and we haven't changed the T values okay so we've got the the out of one curve okay and it's going off with a certain velocity vector okay and then we've got the in of another curve coming in with a certain velocity vector and then the bezier let's use another color the bezier is supposed to match those guys boom nicely okay so the r naught of the bezier is going to be the end point of bob's curve the r3 of the bezier is going to be the starting point of alice's curve okay and then to get the control points let's see well remember the deal was the r2 controls the direction but what it really was was i'm going to put r sorry r1 here controls this direction what we got is that r prime of zero the velocity of the bezier is going out of the start one was three times r1 minus r naught the separation vector and so if you solve that for the mystery r1 it's r naught plus one third of that velocity vector and that velocity vector that's the green there we can get as the the last velocity vector for bob because that wants to i want that to start the initial velocity vector i want it to match the initial velocity vector for the bezier okay over here remember it's backwards back here is r2 and the the um, equation was r prime of one this velocity that start that ends the bezier which should match the starting of alice that was three times r uh three uh, minus r2 okay because it's going from r2 to r3 in that direction and so if we solve that for r2 that's going to be um yeah it's going to be one third it's going to be r3 minus one third r prime of one if you solve that okay so um that's going to be how we get these guys okay so um let's see oh this is what am i doing oh i've got an of zero here oh uh that's what that's what was going on that's r prime i thought it was i thought it sounded weird when i said it okay there we go okay so let's calculate let me see if we can calculate oh i, I think i'm gonna need to well maybe i can stick it in here okay we need r prime of bob okay that's going to be minus sine t two cosine t one half okay and then at the time in question it's the end of bob that's at two pi and so that's just going to give us um why is this seeming weird i'm just going to make sure trying to make sure of my notes that i'm not doing anything weird yeah zero two one half yep okay oh and of course we need r bob uh at two pi the actual location that's going to be the r naught okay so we're getting these two pieces of data we're getting r naught and the r prime naught 
for the Bezier. Uh, that's going to be just 1, 0. And then pi plus 1. Two, t is 2 pi, so pi plus 1. And I'm just going to put that in as like 4.14, because we're probably going to need to just have it as a decimal. OK? Now our Alice, OK, well, let's see. Where is our Alice at 0? Because we're matching the start of her curve right there, OK? At 0, it's just going to be 0, comma, 2, comma, 4. OK. And then let's see if I can squeeze it in. I just don't want to lose my lovely picture. Uh, I'll put it down here. Our Alice prime at 0 is going to be 1, 3. Well, in general, at t. That's 1, 3, 6, cosine 3t. OK. And when she starts out, then that's going to be 1, 3, minus 6. OK, lots of stuff. Getting kind of busy and complicated. But let's review what we wanted, OK? R0 is the end of Bob's curve and therefore the start of the Bezier. We now with that know what that is. It's 104.14. That was just by gotten by evaluating Bob's curve at the end of whatever the correct t parameter was for the end of Bob's curve, OK? Then uh, our prime of 0 for the Bezier which isn't the direct information we put in the Bezier, but it's necessary to get there. That was the velocity of r prime of Bob at the end. I did forget to get in the 2 pi there. OK? So that's going to be the 0, 2, 1 half. And in just a second, we'll be able to get the r1. We'll just do this calculation, this plus a third of s. OK? In fact, let's do that. Can you see that? Nope. Oh, now nah, let let's not push it. OK? All right. And then. Um, over here, R3, that's the start of Alice's curve, the end of the Bezier, that's going to be this guy. Okay. And then R2, we're going to get from this information, aha, we need the velocity that's going to end up the Bezier, but that is Alice's starting velocity. Okay, so that's going to be R prime of 1 for the Bezier. Okay, shoo! So, Let's at least, I think we can erase all this stuff, because we don't need Alice and Bob anymore. OK, that red is really kind of a little too bold, I think, and kind of weird on the clashing with the pink. OK, all right, so r naught is equal to 1, 0, 4.14. r1 is r naught plus a third of this guy. So we're going to get 1. Uh, two thirds, because of one third times two, and then one sixth plus four point one four. Okay, and so that's going to be um, about four point three one. That's a four. Okay, so there's our one. Our Two, we'll fit a fill in a second. R3 is easier. R3 is just this guy. And R2 is, that's with this guy. It's at R3 minus a third of this puppy. Okay. So zero minus one third, so minus one third. And then two minus a third of three is one, so that's one. And then 4 minus a third of minus 6. So 4 plus 2 is 6. OK, so there's the Bezier data for the curve. OK, now we just need to plug that in to the master Bezier formula. But I don't want to overdrive my screencaster because it tends to crap out on me when I do that. So we'll finish it up um, in another video, and then we'll put it into the applet and hope it works.